Yo, we're here in Chicago. And we've got David here in a Starbucks in El Salvador. David has his strike account linked to his Twitter account. And we're gonna make a free instant cash final remittance payment over Twitter. So I'm gonna go search David's Twitter account on my phone. I'm gonna find his tips button and I'm gonna send David $10 over Twitter for changing the world. It's gonna open my non-custodial Lightning Moon wallet. Anyone in the world can download and I'm just gonna hit send. And boom, we just made an instant free remittance payment from Chicago, Illinois, USA to San Salvador, El Salvador over Twitter. Why would anyone ever use Western Union again? When you take one of the world's largest social internet networks and you combine it with the world's best open monetary network, Twitter accidentally becomes one of the best remitting experiences in the world. This one singular payment standard and this one singular open monetary global monetary network is dematerializing all existing monetary networks. Western Union, pawn to E4, your move. And joining me now in a first on CNBC interview is Jack Mallers. He is the founder and CEO of Strike. Jack, it's great to see you again. I, and I want to emphasize for everybody, this is as Twitter, I believe, is rolling out the tips feature to all users and integrating with a lot of different apps and Patreon and other things to make that happen. But from the Bitcoin and crypto point of view, this is about more than just tipping people over Twitter, isn't it? Kelly, I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> um, yes, Kelly, it is. Uh, they are integrating other monetary networks, but let me make this point abundantly clear. The Bitcoin monetary network is the only global monetary network that they're integrating, and it is the only global monetary network to ever exist in human history. You're talking about a monetary network that can achieve digital bare instrument cash finality instantly and at relatively no cost anywhere, anywhere in the world at any time. You combine that with one of the biggest internet networks in Twitter, and all of a sudden you have absolute payment disruption that's been a long time coming, and I'm proud and excited to see it. Jack, will, would there be anybody who doesn't want to be tipped in Bitcoin, um, number one? I'm just, you know, again, just because in the U.S. it's property, there's more tax implications, it's, it's more complicated. So even though the Lightning Network may facilitate the transaction, it is still property, there are still some headaches there. And separately, what would you say about strikes? It, 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 can, can this feature even be used in New York? And I forget which states. I'm not sure if you guys have full licenses for yet. Yeah, well, let's revisit, Kelly. Last time I was on here, we talked about the division between Bitcoin, the asset. This is this commodity-like, precious metal-like asset. And then there's Bitcoin, the network. This is a monetary network, like the Visa network, like the PayPal network, like the Western Union network and it achieves monetary functions on a global network, instant global cash finality. So I'd like to divide those two, Kelly. And what we do at Strike is we escrow and settle the value globally, instantly, and at no cost, and allow you to interface with just dollars, just Japanese yen, just euros. So actually, in the Twitter tips product as it is today and as it's rolling out as we speak, nobody's touching Bitcoin. We're just using Bitcoin to make tweeting at someone as easy as sending money at someone anywhere in the world, anytime, any place, any currency, it doesn't matter, right? So there needs to be a conceptual division of the network, which stands alone in its disruptive innovation for Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, than just the asset. You don't need to touch the asset to gain benefit from the network. Let me ask you two questions. Uh, you've used the phrase a couple of times, instant global cash finality. I don't know what that means. Those sound like terms of art, which is fine. Uh, I know it's from the world you live in and, and, and not the world I live in. Uh, uh, that's number one. But number two, where the hell are you? Uh, uh, you, look, you, look, you look like you're in an empty warehouse or something. Where are you, man? Everybody knows that modern day innovation is built out of a giant empty women's closet. Yeah. I can't tell if that's a rhetorical question or not. Um, God, that's what I was wondering. With... It looks like an empty woman's closet. Or not an empty woman, uh, but an empty closet. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're, you're, you're a smart guy. Don't doubt yourself. That's exactly what it is. Now, here's what instant global cash finality means at relatively no cost a Western Union payment can take zero to eight days. 
Remittance to small merging third world countries can be upwards to 50%. Why? Can the dollars that are sitting in my pocket in this women's closet land in another country in less than a second at no cost? No. How can any money do that? It has to be natively digital and bearer. That mm -hmm. is the innovation of Bitcoin. You're, close your eyes and picture an actual physical Bitcoin traveling across an ocean, across a globe, across a continent, a border, and landing in a physical place instantly and at no cost. Bitcoin as a digital asset is the first money in human history to enable that. And it works everywhere in the world. What the internet did to communication in enabling instant communication protocol and a singular open standard for communication for the entire planet, Bitcoin network is doing that for money. You're gonna see a grand dematerialization of all of these independent monetary networks that have fixed cost, credit risk, counterparty risk, balance sheet float. I'm talking about the visas, the MasterCards, the Western unions, and they're all gonna get dematerialized onto a one singular global monetary standard that can perform settlement instant, perform settlement at no cost, and perform settlement in a borderless fashion, and so agnostic it becomes, of your country. As opposed to having However many currency, there are 190 some, 195 countries in the world. Many of who's them have counting? their, pardon? Who's counting? Who's yeah, counting? who's counting? But, but the, if, if, if I'm hearing you right, you're saying that Bitcoin or crypto can become a, and is already a global currency worth the same amount in every place at, at, at the same time. And so if I am in, 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 in Jakarta, I am getting the same value as if I am in uh, Toronto. And that can be a very good thing. So I'm not, I'm not having to go with exchange rates and, and so on and so forth. It's all the same. That, that is a, a, a good part of it, right? Yeah, and you know what I think, again, we need to separate and really divide Bitcoin, the network and the innovation it delivers mm -hmm. as compared to the Visa network or the TransferWise network and Bitcoin, the asset that can be comparable to gold as one of the best savings technologies of all time. Let's focus on the network. The network achieves this instant finality globally. So a remittance payment nowadays, a remittance payment on a platform like Twitter or on our platform Strike, if I want to send US dollars to Europe, what happens is Strike debits the US dollars out of my Chase checking account. I don't need to own Bitcoin. I don't need to know where it is. I just link my Chase checking account, Strike debits the dollars out, auto converts it to Bitcoin, zips that physical value across the world where it lands in Europe in real time and at no cost, and then it transfers it back into euros. And so we don't make you interface with Bitcoin, the asset. We don't make you be a believer that Bitcoin's going to go to the moon. We're using the underlying network infrastructure to make for a better payment rail mm -hmm. than the visas, the Western unions, all, all of these monetary networks, the legacy, outdated, expensive ones that exist today. Jack, a, a quick final question. We've had some big news this week. Robinhood launching a crypto wallet. As I mentioned, you're still checking some boxes with state regulators here uh, for your own. Can you explain whether you welcome and embrace the arrival of, wall of crypto wallets from Robinhood, from Venmo, uh, maybe from Cash App, the other players in this space? Or are these all rival wallets that, you know, you would prefer, obviously, people to use yours, which is Strike? Yeah, so we, Kelly, believe that in an open network, new participants are additive. They're not subtractive. You're talking about an open monetary network. Kelly, in the same way that Google invites more websites to join the internet because it makes Google a more valuable company, we invite more network participants to join the world's first open monetary network because it makes our services more valuable. We're talking about disrupting monetary functions as we know it onto a singular global monetary standard. There's going to be many, many winners in this grand disruption, hmm. and we're excited to see more people join. Well, we appreciate you joining us today, Jack. I think we will have more questions uh, if you'll come back and join us in the future. Yeah, next time, some shoes. Buy yourself some shoes. <laughs> oh, don't hang up on me yet. I got some Crocs. All right, yeah, all right. Thank you, my friend.